Salute. Hey man, listen, this is OJ's MMA here, aka Alex. In today's video, lads, we're going to be talking about, as you can see by my screen, the future champions inside the UFC, you know, future goats, future chads, you know, as you can see, we've got some people on the screen. Basically, I'm going to be going from flyweight all the way up to heavyweight, talking about who I think is the next champion in each division, starting with Manel cap right bro this guy's gonna be the next flyweight champion and we all know that this guy is incredibly base probably one of the most base fighters i've ever seen this guy is easily one of the most avoided flyweights of all time okay if you check this guy's resume everybody pulls out against this guy you know what i mean kai kai france alex perez the, the guy cannot catch a break when it comes to people pulling out of fights another thing i gotta mention bro this guy has you know this isn't the best stat listen but he has 70 percent takedown defense ratio which is really good in all honesty and he has super crispy boxing okay let's talk about how he finished the goat of split decision losses zalgas zumagulov okay the point that i want to get to is zalgas zumagulov has never been finished in his career but no cap finished him in one round bro mega chad things all right Basically, he finished him with beautiful combos. I think he dropped him before he even finished him. And he basically just swarmed Zalgad Zumagulov in the first round super easily with um, crispy boxing combinations. Finished his ass off. Sent him back to Kazakhstan. But hey, man. No one else has finished the king of split decision losses, all right? So that's a big, that's a big stat. This guy is also the former Ryzen champion, okay? Ryzen is a huge promotion over in Japan where Yuri Prohaska was a champion. Basically, it's uh, it's one of the biggest MMA promotions outside the UFC and one championship, in my opinion. This guy was the champion over there. He beat a lot of good guys. And yeah, lads, I think this guy... I think this guy is honestly a problem, man. I think he's going to staunch a lot of people in the flowy division. I really want to see him fight Kai Kara France in their next fight. As you can see, they had beef at the press conference at UFC 293, but yeah... I think Manel Cap's the next flyweight champion because who else is it going to be? Muhammad Makaev? I mean, shit. Let me, do let me know in the comments down below. But, hey, man, moving on to Bantamweight, we have an underrated option, okay? I'm going to go with Corey Sanhagen here, guys. Let me explain why. I think Corey Sanhagen by far has one of the most underrated resumes in the UFC Bantamweight division. I mean, look at who he's fought. Just straight killers, okay? I understand that he lost to Piotr Jan and Aljamain Sterling. But these are the fucking top of the echelon people in, you know, the Bantamweight division. He has a great skill set and fight IQ, okay? This guy hasn't really lost to anyone that isn't excellent. And, yeah, man, the way this guy strikes is incredible. Like, he has really good jiu-jitsu, really good wrestling. As you saw, he dominated Cheeto Vera. I don't know how that was a split decision, okay? But he's a really well-rounded fighter. He can mix up his striking really well together, fight from both stances. He has great wrestling. He can do it all, man, really. This guy is also spiritually based. And what I mean by this guy is if you check this guy's Instagram, he is always fucking talking about mushrooms, you know, reading books, um, going on hikes and all that type of stuff. This guy is super spiritual, okay? So make sure you go check out his Instagram if you'll see what I mean. Next up, I think he would flying knee carry Marab, okay? I'm not even afraid to say this. I really do think that he would like, I think he would fuck up Marab, okay? I I think Sean O'Malley and Corey Sanhagen would both flying knee Marab. You know, it depends on how good Marab's chin is, but yeah. Anyways, this guy's a solid matchup for the current champion, Sugar Sean O'Malley, okay? This is a dream fight that I really want to see. I really want to see Sugar Sean O'Malley take on Corey Sanhagen. Like, who wouldn't, bro? This is a dream matchup in the bantamweight division. And I think Corey Sanhagen has a really good shot. They both kind of have the same frame, this kind of same size, same height, same everything, bro. So I need to see this fight before we all die. Corey Sanhagen is still young as well, you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure he's only like 30, 31, so I heard that he wants to retire pretty soon as well, so we need to give this guy his next title shot. I feel like after Cheeto Vera fights Sugar Sean O'Malley, depending on who wins that fight, we need to see Corey Sanhagen fight next for the belt. The last thing I want to say, guys, is this guy literally got fucking robbed by TJ Dillashaw, okay? I remember watching that fight like two years ago and just being very, very upset that he got fucking robbed bro that was a clear robbery if you guys think tj dillashaw won like let me know bro look at this guy's face damage trumps everything okay i don't even care moving on we have in the featherweight division max blessed holloway okay now you might see Ilya Taporia on the screen and it was kind of between these two guys you know what i mean who i think might be the next champion Let's take a look at Max Holloway, okay? I think this guy is still an elite featherweight, okay? This guy is literally undefeated at featherweight other than losing to Alexander Volkanovsky three times. There is no shame in losing to Volk, okay? He beats anybody not named Volk, okay? We all know that. This guy literally has the S-tier granite chin, okay? We have v Marvin Vittori, you know, Max Holloway. I don't know who else to put on S-tier, but 
the fact that, you know, Max Holloway has a granite shin, I just, if he becomes champ, I don't know who's going to knock him out, you know what I mean? It's almost unfair, like I said. This guy has an insane volume output. We saw what he did to Calvin Cater. We saw what he did, like, bro, we see what he does to everybody, okay? He just fucking, he lands like a, like a thousand significant strikes in every single matchup. That is absolutely insane. And he still looks like a future champion, you know what I mean? This guy is already a legend in the UFC. This guy has already cemented his spot as a GOAT in the featherweight division. And he's still here, bro. Like I said, he's undefeated at featherweight. He's only lost to Volk. And, bro, he's beating everyone but Volk, okay? So, I really feel like Max Holloway would be one of the like one of the GOATs of the sport in MMA if Volkanovski never existed. Because I truly do believe that Max Holloway would be defending his belt against everybody, you know what I mean? Racking up heaps of title defenses, becoming a GOAT already. The last thing I want to say, guys, is, yeah, I really do think that Ilya Tapore and Max Holloway are going to fight in the future. And if they do fight, I'm I'm kind of curious that it's going to be for the vacant featherweight belt. Obviously, we know Volkanovski wants to go up to 155 and challenge Islam Mahachev. And when he moves up to 155, I think Volk will not go back down. So... I would like to see Ilya versus Max for the vacant featherweight title. And I would pick Max Holloway, bro. If Max Holloway was, like, really chinny, then I'd be going with Ilya Tapore. But, yeah, I really do believe that Max Holloway is going to get that strap back, okay? Moving on to the lightweight division. It's Shadow Bronx. Shadow Bronx. The champion has a name. The champion has a name. Shadow Bronx has had the Listen, bro. This guy is a fucking menace in the lightweight division, okay? We saw what he did to Benil Darius. Absolutely destroyed him. That was absolutely insane to watch, okay? I just want to say this guy is not done. Like I said, this guy is like still in his prime. Literally in his prime, you know what I mean? Just because he had one bad loss to Islam Mahachev doesn't mean he's done. He's rematching him in, in October, so I'm really excited to see that. This guy is probably the most Giga Chad lightweight in the division, I'll be honest with you. You know, if there's anybody else more Giga Chad than Charles Oliveira, then let me know. This guy has excellent jiu-jitsu. We all know that. This guy has the most fucking submission wins in the UFC. This guy brings the chaos, okay? I got some pretty basic points here, but I, I do think that Charles Oliveira will be the next champion, okay? Listen, it's the same thing with Volk and Max. Islam Mahachev might want to go up to 170 and fight Colby Covington or whoever, you know, at 170 for the belt. So, this guy brings the chaos in every single fight. And he's a beast. He can beat anyone not named Islam Mahachev. I think Islam's going to beat him in the rematch. But I truly do think Charles beats everybody else. You know what I mean? I do think Charles Oliveira can rack up some more title defenses, bro, if he gets the belt back. You know what I mean? I don't see him losing to guys like, you know, Matash Gamrot, Armin Sarukian. I feel like Charles Oliveira has really underrated power. You know, power that people do not realize. You know what I mean? He's sitting down Benil Darius. He's dropping Michael Chandler, dropping Justin Gaethje. I don't think anyone's ever dropped Justin Gaethje other than Eddie Alvarez or I don't know who else. You can correct me in the comments below. But yeah, this guy has very underwhelming power and I truly believe this guy will be the champion again let's not forget bro like i said this guy is still in his prime you know what i mean he's got a couple good years left and i really do think he can get that strap back bro i really do think so so moving on in the welterweight division all right boys we're going to <laughs> mega chad shavkat rachmanov guys i don't know if colby's going to become champ okay i really don't think he beats leon i think leon's going to beat him but if i jinx this then i jinx this but you can't tell me that Shavkat is not going to be the future welterweight champion, okay? Look at what he did to my boy, Carlson Harris. Spinning sidekicked him into unconsciousness. That made me really, really sad. Bro, this guy's undefeated. All finishes, okay? Who? Name me. Like, who the fuck has finished all their fights in the UFC and in their MMA career in general? Being 17-0 and 0 is crazy to me with all finishes. This guy has that Genghis Khan genetics, okay? We all know this guy is from Kazakhstan. He's from the mountains. This guy is a true savage, a true warrior. He's also a master of sport in combat sambo, which is just giga chat shit if you ask me, bro. That's like that's like going to university and studying a degree for like eight years, you know what I mean, in combat sambo. So there's no way this guy isn't a future champion, you know what I mean? The, sh the shots he took off Jeff Neal, who's easily one of the hardest hitters in the UFC, he knocked out Vicente Luque, you know, who has the like one of the best granite chins of all time. He took his best shots, you know what I mean? So that's all I'm going to say. This guy is a master of sport in MMA as well. Like I said, this guy has two fucking degrees within the mixed martial arts company, bro. Whatever you want to call it. This guy has an insane Riz game, okay? We saw what happened with... <laughs> we saw what happened with Laura Sanko, you know what I'm saying? Laura Sanko, just, she literally just can't keep her dick in her pants, if you know what I mean. But what I'm trying to say is, is Shavkat has an insane Riz game, okay? This guy is easily going to become the champion in the future. I don't think Shavkat's going to lose to anybody. I really don't. I can see people giving Shavkat a tough fight, you know what I mean? But I really don't know who's going to beat Shavkat. So... 
that's the next welterweight champion in my opinion moving on into the middleweight division lads we have we have Dracus Duplessis okay mind the images on the right they look a bit clapped um I don't know if Dragos Duplessis looks like a midget or what, but hey, listen up, okay? I believe that Dragos Duplessis will be the next UFC middleweight champion because this guy has literally fluked his whole way up to the top of the division. Now, I don't want to say that Dragos Duplessis is a bad fighter and he somehow is getting lucky in every fight. This guy is, you know, getting finishes in some of his fights that he's had in the UFC, but he's mainly just beating people, you know what I mean, in these wars that he has. He's a really fun fighter. He has amazing scraps we have to talk about how he's a mythical fighter okay drake's fixed nose duplicy is a mythical fighter okay i remember before he fought robert whittaker this guy fought Derek bronson and he was just gassing out horribly he gassed out horribly but he was just pushing on like an absolute beast he ended up finishing Derek bronson and then after that fight he said he had to go have surgery on his nose dude this guy comes back and smokes robert whittaker super easily okay who the fuck does that I don't I don't know who has smoked Robert Whitaker in the last 10 years other than Israel Adesanya. This guy also beat the GOAT Darren Till. Okay, all my homies love Darren Till. The craziest part about that fight is Darren Till actually won a round against Dragos Duple C, but it wasn't enough to stop the absolute workhorse in Dragos Duple C. This guy has an absolute crazy style of fighting, you know what I mean? If you notice how this guy fights, he literally leaves his chin up wide in the air. He just he has a 76-inch reach advantage, so he throws really straight and weird punches, and he throws a lot of power in each of his punches, but he has the weirdest fighting style I've ever seen, I swear to God. I have to mention this guy, like I said before, he's an absolute animal in the cage. This guy has heart for days, you know what I mean? This guy, in half of his fights, he's getting, like, rocked all over the place. He's getting hurt. He's getting tagged on the chin, and he does nothing but press forward. So this guy's an absolute fucking tank, and he ends up winning majority of the time. Basically, every time, you know, he's undefeated in the UFC. What I want to say, guys, is Drakus is a workhorse, man. Look at how he's, you know, he loses the first round against, you know, certain dudes and then he comes back and beats the shit out of them. You know what I mean? This guy leaves a... I really do believe that Strickland would get the better of him on the feet. And Strickland is a very underrated grappler, but I just feel like, you know, Drakus Duplessis is that guy, man. If he smoked Robert Whitaker easily in two rounds, bro, I just don't see how he doesn't beat Sean Strickland. And like I said, guys, I think he's going to have the greatest story in MMA history, okay? This guy is, like, one of the first South Africans to represent in the UFC. He's going to fucking make his way up to the title like that, undefeated, take out Sean Strickland as the champion, and become, you know, the new middleweight champion from South Africa. He's going to be an absolute celebrity, a superstar in the UFC, and we're going to have a new middleweight champion in Drakus Duplessis. Moving on to light heavyweight, guys, we have... John Moore. John Moore. As a son, uh, Jamal. Guys, we have Alex Pereira as the next light heavyweight champion. Okay, let me explain. This guy is one of the greatest kickboxers to ever live. Okay, he's a two division glory kickboxing champion, which is absolutely mental. It's crazy to even be a glory champion. You know what I mean? That shit is very high level. He's pole time for a reason, bro. You know what I'm saying? This guy has knocked out so many people. You know, pole time translates in Brazilian language to hands of stone. So you understand, bro. This guy flattens people when he fights them. This guy is 7-1 against Izzy, okay? Let me explain. Oh, man. This guy is just 7-1. There's not much to explain, okay? He beat Jan Blolovic. Jan beat Izzy. Sean Strickland beat Israel Adesanya. Alex Pereira knocked him out cold. So that's two wins, right? Israel Adesanya was recently caught up with a drunk driving incident. If you, if you haven't gone and check it out, make sure you go check out the my last video. But listen, Alex Pereira defeated alcoholism when he was a kid, bro. He, he was he was an alcoholic for a long time, bro. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure he was like an alcoholic for a long time, for years. And then he just eventually got off the shit with kickboxing. So respect to him, man. So that's another victory for Alex Pereira, okay? So the guy is just... An absolute villain, you know what I mean? Comes over from glory and, and haunts Israel Adesanya down after knocking him out. Absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, dude, this guy is just an absolute fucking menace. And I have to say, dude, the way that he just came into the UFC, won the belt of Israel Adesanya, kind of, like I said, fast-tracked his way to the UFC title. Absolutely mental, you know what I mean? I, I could not, I just don't remember a happier day than seeing Paul Tom beat Israel Adesanya with all due respect. All I have to say is this guy... His chin is refreshed at 205 pounds. You know what I mean? Alex Pereira used to do the roughest weight cut to 185 pounds, I believe. If we take a look here, he looks like a skeleton, kind of. He doesn't really look too worn out, which is kind of crazy, too, considering how much he cut. 
But all I have to say is, this guy naturally weighs around 230 pounds, I'm pretty sure, which is fucking ridiculous. So he, this guy could probably even go up to heavyweight and fight, but uh, I don't know, that's a different division. But the point is, his chin will be refreshed, man, you know what I mean? He fought Jan Blachowicz. Jan Blachowicz really didn't do anything to him, you know what I mean? He almost submitted Alex Pereira, but Pereira really showed, you know, great grappling ability defensively to get out of that shit, man, on guard. So, I have to say his chin is refreshed at 205 pounds. I want to see him fight, like, a, a heavy-handed killer like Yuri Prohaska. You know, he's really going to test his chin. So, that's that's going to be a fight of the century. Mark my words. Moving on to heavyweight, we have... You know what? I think he's a great guy, you know? Listen up, boys. We have Tommy Arsenal being the future heavyweight champion, okay? Now, I've been very tied with him and Sergei Pavlovich. Kind of like the Poirier, Max Holloway situation in the featherweight division. At some point, those guys are going to fight for the titles. It's probably going to be for the vacant heavyweight title as well, man. And all i got to say is... Alistair Overeem took down Sergei Pavlovich, you know what I'm saying? So, there's no doubt that Tom Arsenal would do the same. As you can see, he is absolutely carving my boy Alexander Volkov up on this bottom picture. Yeah, I gotta say, Tom Arsenal has an elite ground game. For heavyweight, you know, heavyweights can't really grapple, bro, let's be honest. That's why guys like Curtis Blades, Jolton Armada have cruised their way up to the top five at heavyweight because... Because some of these guys are just not athletic at all, and they cannot stuff a takedown. This guy has great jiu-jitsu. I'm pretty sure he's been doing jiu-jitsu since he was like a young kid. He's a black belt, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, being a black belt in jiu-jitsu for a heavyweight is very impressive, and he's very athletic, bro. Don't get me wrong. This guy moves like a welterweight, kind of like similar to Cyril Gunn. However, I must say, Cyril Gunn is avoiding this man at all costs, all right? Cyril Gunn ducked Tom Aspinall at the last UFC Paris card, and he did it again on this UFC Paris card. Tom Aspinall was sitting in the crowd. He ducked my boy like a fish. He didn't even say anything. He just wanted to go straight to the title. You have to fight Tom Aspinall, my guy, okay? This is one of the most anticipated heavyweight fights of all time we want to see. If they make that fight the third time, I'm very confident Tom Aspinall submits Sergei Pavlovich or just wrestle fucks him to a decision. I really am confident in it. I must say, Tom Aspinall does keep his chin up a bit high, but all I'm going to say is, this guy smoked bum Spivak in 40 seconds, right? We all know Sergei Spivak. I don't even know how this guy got a main event against Cyril Gunn. I don't think that guy's all that bad, but he doesn't have the best grappling, brother. He doesn't have the best grappling. And Tom Arsenal basically beat his ass within 40 seconds of the first round. I'm pretty sure he, like, elbowed him from the clinch, like, split his face open off a knee. Some brutal stuff off an elbow, pardon me. But, yeah. Tom Arsenal is the future champion, okay? Like I've been trying to say, I, I thought it was Pavlovich for a long time, but Pavlovich does have some tendencies in his game. And while Tom Arsenal does leave his chin up high like he was doing against Marcin Tybora, I do think Sergei Pavlovich can definitely knock Tom Arsenal out. But I can also think that Tom Arsenal will be able to close the distance and take down Sergei Pavlovich and do what he wants with him. So, Tom Arsenal is your future UFC heavyweight champion, lads. Hey man, listen, if you've made it to the end of the video, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I always appreciate anyone that watches my content. If you haven't already, my guy, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be uploading a lot of content in the future, man. I'm doing big things on this channel, all right? I'm going to be taking over the MMA YouTube community scene, but listen... Subscribe if you're new, bro. Honestly, leave a comment down below. Let me know who you think is the next future champion in every weight class. Let me know if I missed anyone, any honorable mentions, if you think it's going to be a future UFC champion. And until my next video, guys, you have a great night. Stay safe. Peace.